Welcome to the Chalice Well Gardens. If we could keep particularly close grouped at this stage here, because obviously it's, it's a peace garden, it's a place of great quiet and peace, so I don't want to be shouting things all over the place, but we'll, 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 if we have time, we'll have a bit of free time at the end. So, um, it, what a beautiful, beautiful entrance to one of the most sacred places in the whole of Chalice Well, in the whole of Glastonbury. Because of course, before everything else was built, this spring was flowing, it's a natural spring. So this predates anything else you'll see really. And uh, over the years, right from the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, this has been a, a sacred place, I think. So um, you, can pan you can purchase little bottles if you want to at the entrance for 50p or a pound, so you can actually take some of the chalice well water home with you and uh, put it in your other ward. Homeopathically, you'll have a little bit in your water forever then if you spread it around. So, so the time to get those little bottles is when we go in. In my talk, um, Tor suggests it's nice to spend just a, a few seconds in the area. He sees it like as a cleansing to leave all that stuff behind, the road and the traffic. So welcome to the, the Chalice Well Garden. Uh, this is a place that's got a lot of associations with the Grail. Uh, in fact, some people say that it is at the wellhead under a little, uh, was it octagonal chamber um, that was there. And uh, what we're seeing now is actually the top uh, of, of a, a, an ancient room, which I've seen a drawing of, which the, the water flows through. So legend has it that the Grail is somewhere under there, or at least it was for a while to imbue the water with the magical properties. The waters are very stained red of course and uh, they're not local waters out of the Tor because uh, if you want the Tor water that comes out in the White Spring. This actually comes I think from the Mendips. They've done some experiments putting coloured dye. So this comes from several miles under the Mendips and on, the, on route it picks up a lot of iron and haematite which gives it the red colour. And um, of course Christians see this as the blood of Christ. Uh, and um, you know, it's, uh, and, and pagan seed as the uh, as the as the blood, uh, the flow, the amniotic fluid, if you like, of the of the Earth Mother. Uh, when, when there's a map, we're, we're start, I'm putting this in a direction that we're facing. So here's the well, the Vesica Pisces, and the Mary Current generally comes up here, flows up the whole axis, just like Glastonbury. Uh, Abbey and then the, the Michael flow was doused as splitting into two and there's a reason it splits into two because there's two very special sites here. When we get up to the wellhead we're going to split the group into two. A lady has asked us to split the group up a little bit because there might all be people up there. Um, so um, we will have some free time where you can all kind of do your own thing for a bit. Um, so the energy flows between those two yew trees, which is absolutely magical to stand behind. But again, here's the, the Vesica Pisces. Again, it's where Christians get their fish from, but I think the Buddhists call it the mana. There's a lot of cultures that have got uh, this overlapping two circles. So if you saw my talk yesterday, you'll see it's a very ancient, um, a very ancient symbol. It rep you know, the two circles can represent the spiritual world, this world, the yin, the yang. And of course, the space in the middle, you can see exactly where Christianity got the fish from. That's all it is. So it's, um, was it Tudor Paul who founded this garden or first, yeah? Uh, well, so when did it go into a trust? Alice Buckton. Alice Buckton. She bought the garden and yeah. Wesley Tudor Paul was part of the mystic group. Okay. She was a Sufi. Okay, because Tudor Pohl was one of the very early mystics of Glastonbury. He's held up as a bit of a legend, really, and probably rightly so. So, again, even when they, they put this in in recent years, I remember a time when this wasn't here. And again, the sinuous flow, it's the serpent. It's been done so wonderfully, this. Again, generally, nature hates straight lines. You know, people go on about ley lines and grids, yet you look in nature, very few things are straight. You know, <laughs> even everything you see straight on the planet is curved. You cannot have a straight ley line on the planet because it's curved and uh, there's very few things that are straight in nature. The growth of some crystals for sure, even light is curved as it goes across the universe because it's been affected and I find these serpents and the dragons uh, represent what I see as the, uh, this is how I see the energies flowing and they've got this one to follow where Mary comes in the garden, they've done it perfectly. Um, so if we go up to the next level that's between the two yew trees which is really special between there. 
Or again, does Mary follow the line because they put it there? Yeah, well, I, Mary did go across that lawn before they put that, that spring in. But, so yeah, the, end of the, the Mary current again goes up through the Vesica Pisces pool, goes through the Hughes and to a very, very sacred place, which when we get there, I will say very little. Where the waterfall is, is the first place that in the garden where the Michael and Mary cross. And when we go in there, you'll actually see the branches of the yew trees are actually bending down. They want to stay in the energy. I mean, they don't want to grow up a bit like me, really. Um, so they, they're, they're bending down, and you see this a lot. Uh, some, one of the speakers yesterday showed a, a, um, a slide of where the trees were going along the ground, because that's where the energies were. Fabulous, underneath the blind springs. So these two yew trees are, are fabulous. Sue's having a hug, why not? And of course, yew trees are very ancient Celtic trees, very ancient. There's so much mysticism associated with yews. Nobody ever sees a yew tree die or sees a yew tree born. So they're very much associated with immortality. They were planted in churchyards because of that reason. In churchyards, it's said that uh, the root of yew trees touches every grave. And I rather, I rather like the idea of that. But there's a lot of lore associated with yew trees. So they represent this real timelessness of the earth. It represents how everything is on a much slower pace than what humans perceive. So we'll go up to the waterfall. Again, this is where the Michael and the Mary, one of the places where Michael and Mary crosses in the chalice well. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, Feel whatever's coming through here feels really nice. So this is a peace place here, so I won't sh say too much here, but then we'll move off after a few minutes if we can. <laughs> this, this is a truly sacred area. It's where it was chosen to do the baptism. The, the Mary is coming up here and it's one of the places Michael crosses. And you see the, uh, the yew trees are bending down, they're attracted by the water, but also the energy. And see how they're twisted? The energy is having an effect on them. Vegetation often shows us a lot what the energies are doing. And this is one of the places in Glastonbury where the Michael and Mary are crossing. So it's a place of great balance of yin and yang. It has a lot of curative properties uh, for iron, because of the iron content, it's good for anything to do with the blood, kidneys, um, liver, and uh, eye complaints too. There's been lots of stories of people coming here telling that they've had cancer um, and that sort of thing, and they've, they've just drunk the well water and nothing else and they've been cured. So there's lots of local folklore about that. Um, when the chalice well is closed, the locals come up in their cars and fill whole huge containers of the water which flows out of the wall, wall into the street. So uh, some locals only drink this water, they won't drink anything else and who can blame them? I think they start going a kind of jaundice colour after a few months but the water is very, uh, but yeah, please, please partake of some. Yes, yes. So um, according to what Hamish Miller and Tony uh, Kenning found, the uh, the, energy, the, the Michael current splits into two at right angles here. So the first current is down by the waterfall and the second current with a, forming a big energy node which you might feel swirling you around a bit, I certainly can, is just here. And so, this is another holy thorn tree here. It's another holy thorn. I think somebody uses this, don't they, to make homeopathy? I think mm -hmm. there's one lady in town. What a fabulous place to get your homeopathic flowers from. So yeah, this is a cutting of the original Holy Thorn. Of course, the original one, well, one of the descendants of the original one on Weary All Hill was uh, cruelly vandalised a few years ago, which shows that some people need a lot of healing in Glastonbury. People often are drawn to Glastonbury for healing and it can have a, a powerful uh, effect more than you can handle.